Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about high speed sync. It's not what you think it is. Before we get started, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Join my group on Facebook. It is called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And follow me on Instagram at Boo Ray Perry. All right, we're going to talk about high speed sync as it pertains to Flash today. And I'm kind of jumping ahead here uh, in my series because this is something that I really probably wouldn't talk about until later in the series. But I want to talk about it because it comes up so often. There's two things that come up, actually. This is one of them, and I'll make a video about the other one probably <laughs> in a couple of days. But I was just speaking in, um, in New York. b &H Electronics has a big conference up there. They brought me up there to speak at their conference. And one of the questions that I got, and I get this question a lot, was about high-speed sync on your Flash. You see, I talk a lot about working on the beach and working in bright sunlight situations where you're squeezing every last bit of power out of your flash and yet you can't get the background as dark as you want it to be. And someone inevitably will say, what about high-speed sync? And then I have to say, yeah, that doesn't help you here. And it always bothers me a little bit because what it really tells me is that people don't understand what high-speed sync is and how high-speed sync works. So let's back it up a little bit. Your flash sends out a pulse of light, right? It charges up, recycles, they call it, and then it sends out a pulse of light. This pulse of light happens while your shutter is open. So the shutter opens, the pulse of light goes out, and the shutter closes, and then it resets. That's the way it works every single time. There is a flash sync speed on your flash. It means this is the speed at which your shutter, if it's opening any faster than this speed, the flash won't work quite right. And basically what it comes down to is when your flash shutter gets to the point, or rather not your flash shutter, but the shutter on your camera, when it gets to the point where it's starting to close before it's completely open, then you've got a problem. See, it does this and then it closes and it resets. But if you go really fast, so most cameras say 1 200th of a second or 1 250th of a second, what happens is it opens, but before it gets all the way open, it starts to close and then and it does this and then it finishes and if you go really fast like if your shutter speed is like a thousandth of a second or two thousandths of a second it literally opens just a little bit and then starts to close immediately and then just does this so it just basically becomes a little band opening that just moves across the surface of your sensor now the flash cannot put out its pulse of light during that entire run because it flashes and it turns off so if you've got a really fast shutter speed like two thousandths of a second and it's doing this the flash is going to pop at like this point or this point or this point or you know, wherever you know depends on what you're on uh, if you've got rear curtain sync that's a whole other video what's <laughs> turned on but it's only going to pop at some point and so what's going to happen is you're going to get a band of light that goes across your picture instead of having the entire picture lit and this is where high speed sync comes in. People say, well, I've got high speed sync. I'll turn on high speed sync. Now what high speed sync does is it charges up the capacitor on your flash and then it pops your flash like a strobe light. So that as this band is moving across your picture, the flash is going pop, 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 right? Pop, 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 pop. And that way the flash is going the whole time and it gets in and illuminates the entire image. All good. However, it doesn't help you if you're on the beach on a bright sunny day. It doesn't help you if you're maxed out. You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about a lot of times when I'm, when I'm doing this and people ask this question is I'll say, you know, we're on the beach on a bright day and you're trying to light people and the sun's behind them. What you have to do is you have to take your ISO and turn it all the way down to like 100 so that your sensor, your sensor is as least sensitive to light as it can be. And you take your shutter speed and you move it up to whatever your flash sync speed is, which is usually around 1 200th or 1 250th of a second. And then you have to raise your aperture until you get the background where you want it to be. And if you do that, a lot of times what happens is you don't have enough flash power because your aperture is so high and your shutter speed is is uh doesn't affect flash really uh, but your iso is so low and your aperture is so high that it's cutting down your flash power so much that you're not getting enough flash on the people 
And when that happens, you have to start opening up the aperture again, open, 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 until you finally get enough light on the people. And that gives you the shot that you want. Except now, your background is kind of blown out. And someone inevitably says, what about high-speed sync? Then you could raise your shutter speed and bring down the background. What about high-speed sync? It won't work there. And here's why. High-speed sync. Remember I told you the flash is going to go pop, 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 pop. Well, think about it. How fast is your flash recharge? Your, your flash can't fire at full power and then recharge and fire again and then recharge and fire again and recharge and fire again. It can't do that all in the space of a thousandth of a second. It doesn't recharge that fast. So how does high-speed sync work? Well, what it does is it divides a full power flash into several smaller power flashes. So if you're in a situation where your flash is already turned up to full power and you're not getting what you want, and you want to try and raise the shutter speed, the minute you raise your shutter speed up past your sync speed and you engage high speed sync on your flash, your flash now, instead of becoming one flash that fires at full power, it becomes a flash that fires twice at half power. And if you raise the shutter speed more, it'll fire three times at a third power each time. And if you go to more, it'll go four times at 25% power. You understand? It'll power up, and then as that thing is moving, it'll go pop, 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 four times. But it can only do it 25% of its normal power across the whole, the whole range. So using high-speed sync, when you can't get enough flash, so you want to raise your shutter speed? No. Because even if you raise your shutter speed, you think, wait a minute, whoa, wait, what about this Blu-ray? Yeah, but if I raise my shutter speed, I can lower my aperture. And if I lower my aperture, it lets more light into the camera. Yeah, okay, that's true. But if you raise your shutter speed so that now your flash has to pop twice at half power, and that enables you to lower your aperture by one stop, which doubles the power of your flash, you're right back where you started. You're right back where you started. You, you've doubled the power of, of your flash, the equivalent power of your flash, by opening up your aperture by one stop. But you've cut your flash in half because now instead of it being one full pop, it's two half pops. And this is going to continue to happen. As you open up your aperture, you're going to raise your shutter speed. And as you raise your shutter speed, you're going to more and more pops, less less power each pop. So it's kind of a very specific situation because there are lots of times when high-speed sync works really, really well for you. Like, like where, where does it work? Okay, <clears throat> if you want to light somebody with a flash and you want to stop their movement with the shutter speed and you don't need a whole lot of flash, then it works. And there's a reason why a lot of times when you see, uh, when they would start, first started releasing these ads for high-speed sync, they would show like a BMX guy on a bicycle. Woo-hoo, he's up in the air, right? And he's lit with the flash. Well, that's a perfect example of when a high-speed sync works great for you because he's mostly lit by the sun. They just want the flash to kind of be fill flash. He's mostly lit by the sun. And since he's in motion, you can't shoot him at 1 60th of a second. So you got to go to like 1 1,000th of a second to stop him. So you're going to stop him at 1 1,000th of a second. But the flash, it's mostly fill flash that you need. You don't need full power. So it's okay that it's going to pop three or four or five times at a third power or a fourth power or a fifth power. <laughs> You'd be just fine doing that. So that's where high-speed high speed sync can work out really well for you. But most of the time, generally speaking, if you're in a situation where your flash is at full power and it's really bright outside and the sun is, you know, the, your, your people are in shade because the sun is behind them and you're trying to light them, going to high-speed sync is usually not going to help you. And that's the myth of high-speed sync.